So I'd like to do uh, an example of a proof by strong induction. So in class previously, we talked about the fundamental theorem of arithmetic uh, that says that any number uh, greater than or equal to two, or maybe I think we stated it as greater than or equal to one, um, can be written as a product of primes. And in fact, that product is unique if you don't care about what order you put the primes in. So uh, the uniqueness part, um, I'm not going to talk about today. That part you can prove. Um, I think if you look in your book on page 271, uh, it's lemma three, it proved the uniqueness part. And that, that proof just uses facts about primes and divisibility and stuff that we did in a previous chapter. Um, but in order to prove just the other part of this theorem is that this is even possible, right? That you can take any number and you can always write it as a product of a bunch of primes, um, which seems not that uh, hard to prove, but um, it does actually require proof. And the way to prove this is using uh, induction. So let's see how that proof works. Okay, so our proof is by induction on the number n. And uh, I'm going to start this proof as a just a proof by regular weak induction, and we'll see what goes wrong. And we'll see why actually uh, we need strong induction uh, in order to prove this. So in our base case, uh, when n equals 2, uh, well, 2 is prime. So that counts, right? 2 is a prime, so it is a product of uh, primes, it's just itself, right? Uh, the in, for the induction step, and again, we're going to try a proof by normal weak induction and see what goes wrong. So for the induction step, um, we would say, uh, let k be some number, right, and we're going to suppose that uh, k can be written as a product of primes. All right, then we have to show that k plus 1 can also be written as a product of primes. Let's think about this number k plus 1. So k plus 1 could be prime, first of all. So k plus 1, or I'll just say if k plus 1 is prime, uh, then we're done because it's already a prime, so it is a product of primes. Um, that's fine. So otherwise it's not prime, and if it's not prime, that means um, there must be some numbers a and b that we can multiply uh, to get k. So otherwise, um, there exist uh, A and B, right? And we know that uh, so I've said here, um, we know that A and B are both bigger than 2 and uh, they're less than k plus 1. So since k plus 1 is not a prime, right, there's some way to factor it into numbers that aren't themselves 1 or k plus 1, but there's something in the middle. Right? Uh, so there exists those such that k is equal to a times b. Um, now what? And so actually, here's where we get stuck. Because um, what I really want to say is, oh, well, a and b you can write them as a product of primes, and then since we're multiplying them, k itself is going to be a product of a bunch of primes, like the primes that come from a and the primes that come from b. <coughs> um, but I don't know that uh, because right, all we've assumed is that k can be written as a product of primes, but there's nothing about k here. Uh, 
there is something about K because I messed up. This says it should say K plus one. Excuse me. Right, K plus one is the number that is not we're assuming is not prime, so that's what we can write as a product of A minus B. Um, right. There's nothing about K. Uh, knowing that K can be written as a product of primes doesn't help us say anything about K plus one. And this is exactly the kind of thing I was talking about in the previous video where you know we had you know this chain of implications and I said sometimes you, you know you can't it's impossible to directly go from knowing something about k to knowing something about p of k plus one right we're in a situation where we have this p of, where we have an a and b somewhere back here and you know those things together are going to imply something about k plus one okay so we need this is where we need this strong induction because we need to assume something about this a and b uh, which might not be the immediately previous number before k plus 1. So let's redo this. So so we're going to do a proof by strong induction on n. Um, it's not you don't necessarily have to say strong induction. Um, it's helpful just to signal to the reader that you're using this type of induction. Um, but, uh, so suppose that, right now we're not just going to suppose that uh, k can be written as a product of primes. We're going to suppose that uh, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 everything up to k can all written as products of primes. Okay, and then we, we still have to show the same thing. We must show k plus 1 can be written as a product of primes. Okay? Um, and over here, if k plus 1 is prime, this, this part is still the same, that's fine, right? Otherwise, there exist. this is all still true, but now we can make some progress because right, a and b, these two numbers, uh, they're somewhere in between 2 and k. So they're in this list, right? We assumed that all those numbers in that list can be written as a product of primes. So I the induction hypothesis A and B can both be written as products of primes. Okay, hence, so can. Uh, a plus 1, which is equal to a product of A and B. And a product of products of primes is itself a product of primes. Okay, so uh, that is a proof by strong induction that every number greater than or equal to 2 can be written as a product of primes.